We have a game, Mr. Remo Demo. I'm looking forward to this game for pretty much a week. When I saw the bracket, when I t saw these legends, when I saw the teams, Lin and TH versus Happy and Fortitude. Like, if you could pick teams for like a dream all-star match, this would be it. Yeah, exactly. These two now meeting in the semifinals. 2v2 is on. We mentioned a bunch of times before. Happy and Fortitude in the 1v1 tournaments. They have a fierce rivalry going on right now. They might very well be the grand finalists this tournament. But in the 2v2, they play together. They work together. Do they also slay together? We'll see. TH has taken a backseat, a step back from the 1v1 competition for a while. But here he's playing together with Fortitude, uh, with uh, Lin, of course. And they looked really, really, really good. Were challenged by Yumi and in vain quite a bit, but found the right solutions at the right time. Happy and 40, the only team that has not lost a single map thus far. The only uh, team that didn't play the best of five uh, full out into a three to two. So might be considered the favorites here. They've been playing together before for the Lao Pao Esports Club, if I'm not mistaken. And... I always say it in every 2-on-2 two two competition, 40, to me, alongside Starbuck, the best 2-on-2 two two player in the world, he seems to be the commander, regardless of who he's playing with, whether that's a colorful or a focus or now a happy, always the right calls, they're really, really freaking good. And the human undead combination, TH and Infi started it at WGTL, and they now uh, ride the wave in a different style, but... Unlike in the 2010s, this combo is definitely possible. Gonna be looking forward to see that. Should be a Blood Mage second, right? I think that's what they've been doing all the time. Whereas Len is going for the Shadow Hunter first. We saw that also look really good yesterday. Shadow Hunter really strong with the Hex early on. There's a Dark Troll Priest against it, but I think that guy doesn't have this spell, right? Does he? Yeah, the Merc camps you. That's uh, kind of my kind of the weak spot in my casting. Uh, you know, I know all the timings, all the other numbers, etc. But it doesn't really matter because he's dead anyway. Yeah. Even if he had this bull, can't do that when you're hexed. And that was the first kill, and here comes the next one. And this is what we're talking about: early strength of the Shadow Hunter makes sense here to attack early because Happy isn't really strong yet. Undead, very powerful late game. Probably the most powerful late game in 2v2, but it takes quite a while to get to that. Yeah, Hex is a crazy spell early on. This could be followed up with a TC or, of course, the Pit Lord, which was a game-winning combo yesterday and also last week. So far, 40 feels forced into Militia. That costs some time, but maybe Ghouls uh, can send some lumber over, and I think this is what just happened. Lin shows that he's on the task with a sweet deny. And of course, there's also a little bit of foreshadowing because Lin and 40 will meet afterwards in a one-on-one -on -one in that sweet winner bracket final. What elemental fights? DK, already rather low. Yeah, being forced to fight on level one as undead with DK without aura is really annoying. You can see how sluggish everything is, how difficult it is to get in the right spot. The DK is hurt already. And TH is just pewing away at him. There's a Hex as well. The Coil, I think, is on cooldown. And the first Fiend goes down. Exclamation mark and a good start. Yeah, they're pretty much... They're, they're dominant here, man. Ring of Regeneration on the Shadowhunter as well. Could pass it to the Archmage to stay in there a little bit longer. Now DK is back with the Coil. Gets a Headhunter. Fiend damage rising. But I would I would say this is working out beautifully. Lots of brawling. The Fend is up and maybe that turns the tides one more time. We got another Merc here as well. The Direwolf, I think it's called. It's a, an okay frontliner. He's got the fast move speed, which is kind of nice, but nothing too crazy. Yeah, lots of pressure coming out from Lin and TH early. Clearly the goal is to make use of the strength of Hex early on, find some kills and also slow down the creeping of the opponent. This has gone very well so far, but they don't want to overstay. Wonder what the tech situation is. Lin has arrived on tier two. One to, uh, one to zero. Uh, TH is on the way, almost done. Fortitude's tech is a lot later, but Happy is arriving on tier two as well. 
Love the shop here. Love the shop between the two bases. Um, Fortitude is setting it up right now at the Merc camp there. Wow, constant brawling for five minutes straight. It's uh, quite admirable to keep the tension up. With the Brilliance Aura, of course, you have the means. Little piercing damage. TC is coming out. Can bring some items, maybe, if he has the gold. TH, wonder if it's the button. Oh! Shadow Priest goes down again. It is quite the high fiend count now. Of course, the piercing damage is not the most insane against heroes, but it will stack up over time. So with the five fiends, I think Happy should be able to push away the opposition, finally, at some point. Especially with Mitch uh, showing up any moment now. Everything's quite hurt now on TH and his ally. Must find the right time to back off. And finally, Happy gets level two. All right, they weather the early game storm. Now, no pit lord saddens me, of course, a little bit. But apart from that, everything seems fine. 2.9, 2.8, Archmage is closing in on 3. Tier 3 started for Lin as the Berserkers seem to be the prime backline at any army composition. Fiends, uh, of course, in competition with them. And we have a Paladin second. Lots of sustain against, of course, a crazy hero kill potential later. But I can... Uh, I'm happy again. We get a pit oh, lord. Oh, dude, that's sick. Of course... Yeah, the Piddler on the human side, the Happy has the DK with the coils to sustain him with healing. That is a nice touch. I like that. We were all expecting a Blood Mage. It's almost always been Blood Mage so far, right? But this also makes a lot of sense by Bori. That was Infi, though. The human players are all a little bit different. Some prefer the Paladin, like uh, Sock would do. Infi always Blood Mage. Seeing that Pit Lord here is indeed in it with Rain of Fire. Oh. Okay. Even more spell damage, in theory. Not gonna be the Cleave Master. I guess he doesn't really have any items for Cleave to be good. So Not yet, no. And of course, yeah, makes makes sense. He can always queue that up later. Uh, Howl could be good, but reaching backlines and AoE in general is amazing for 2 and 2. Paladin by TH in trouble. Can't Holy Light himself, of course. Nova is not possible due to mana. Pit Lord needs a coil. Still, a huge supply lead for 40 and happy currently. Stand here is in. The healing is amazing. Peasants slash militia have been getting kind of roasted over here. But the Pit Lord's mana is now gone. The Brilliant Aura, of course, is sustaining everyone nicely. Along with the statue. This is so much sustain indeed. And they're still pressing on. Even without tier 3, happy is happy. Uh, it's very satisfied. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Age old cast a trap. So, yeah. Sometimes it, ha that, that slips in, right? Herp uh, happy. It does, herp it derp. does. Herp derp. Lin is tier 3 finally. So is happy, as you said. No stomp currently on the TC. It's being nuked. No heal wave. TC. The ring of region. Ah, oh, the paladin is there to the rescue with the holy light when he needed it most. But, man. Sick pressure by the human undead team now. This pit lord created a lot of space. Moving forward, Lin is putting faith in his Berserkers. The upgrade on tier 3 has been achieved a while ago. He's got the Kodo as well. It's some good backline damage. And I think I just saw some oh. Priest Dispel as the TC is getting run down. No way to save him. He was just a bit of mana away from the holy, uh, from the heal wave. And the heroes are in trouble on many sides. All these mercs, they're falling off like crazy now, of course. Paladin, no mana, no more. Wonder what he's aiming for. Lots of range. We get some breakers in. Oh, yeah, you gotta get out of that rain of fire, even though it's only level one. Coil level two established. TC is missing everywhere, but at least the Shadow Hunter's getting some mana back. Region scroll activated. That one's also helpful, but of course, can also be cancelled, like we see here. Death Knight 3 is huge for the fiends, for the Pit Lord, and the pressure is not subsiding. We have had almost no creeping. I think we only crept <laughs> three camps total. <laughs> yeah. Four players creeping a total of only three camps. That is crazy. And very relentless with this attack. Very unusual. TH also kind of supply blocked. He might be shifting some resources over to Lin because one of his production building fell here. Pitlord closing in on level two. That's Cleave. Lich has arrived there. And mana, thanks to statues. So nice to have. TC again in the middle of it all, but still no stop. 
Just an aura bot at the moment. It does get out though, not quite a surround. TC will live to fight another day, of course, earlier. He died already. Deep behind enemy lines here. Gonna need that heal potion. Working as a distraction at the moment. Does get surrounded Oops. here though. And that's pit lot level two. And pit lot level two against breakers, amazing. If he reaches the backline against headhunters, amazing. Even though he's not fueled by these items. They figured out a sweet little timing and army composition for the Lin TH combo. And just got a big upgrade. The Dark Ranger brought in the Orb of Corruption and now we have a lot of damage on Happy. 400 heroes because one of them is on the human side. The Lord raising the presence of the 40 here, of course. And everything's hurt. For Tyrion Infi, everything is wearing a crimson mask. They need the region score badly, but they can't really get to the shop right now. Lost one Sanctum already. The second one's gonna fall. And Tyrion can basically not produce anything anymore. That's a problem indeed. He can send over resources to Lin, but of course he needs the buildings to make use of that. TC really a non-factor. Pathetic. He should have gone for the Pit Lord himself. Grave mistake. The sick combo of DK and Pit Lord, man. The undead heroes reign yeah. supreme and happy and fortitude stay undefeated in the 2-2 two two tournament. Yeah, great timing. Dude, that early Reign of Fire, even if it was only 3 or 4, put so much damage in already. Then they got more kills, they got level 2, then he had the Cleave and the Coil and the Frost Armor to support the Pit Lord. Really strong play. That pressure the enemy team couldn't really uh, do anything against. If there had been more time for Lin to creep, if he had gotten maybe the Wolves out earlier, and eh, not the Wolves, um, the, the Heal Wave and the Stomp out earlier, could have been a different story, but... Not to happen that game. Right on. There was also, like, if they put even more pressure on the DK, the fight might break up and they get mid map control, can creep a lot more. But there was no creeping at all. It was just straight up brawling. Like, just eight minutes. Boom. There we go. Turtle Rock is next. And it might look rather similar with maybe different hero combinations. I. Don't expect the Shadow Hunter here, should rather be a Farseer. And then lots of summons against the human undead combo. Yeah, and on Turtle Rock, a small map like that, oftentimes you would think that the undead's weakness um, towards tier 3, before tier 3, might be able to get exploited. But in this game, Happy for the longest time didn't even utilize tier 3. He didn't have a third hero or an orb for a very long time. What he did have was high fiend numbers very quickly, right? Once he had five fiends, we could, saw, we could see rather the pendulum swinging around the other way. That damage really does stack up a lot over time. I imagine he's going to look for that again. And then there's not an obvious weakness that I see right now in this strat for 40 and Happy. Curious how the dynamic continues here against... 1 to 0 and Kaho was pretty similar every game because also Kaho and 1 to 0 played super similar every game. I'd say that TH and Lin, they got more aces up their sleeves. They got more tricks, more strategies in the book, especially TH. Like, what did he do the past seven days? All he had to do was prepare for this exact match. And hopefully. He had some smart ideas. Yeah, I would ag agree that there's more strategic depth there when it comes to these two players. So I wonder if there's something specific possible. Turtle Rock, by far the smallest map in the pool that always feels a bit claustrophobic in 2v2. There's not much to creep. Normally there's only one big item you're going to get from the red camp. Both get one, uh, both get two consumables. And then normally it's time to push and fight. When is it time to fight, though? We're still in the loading screen here. Um, little reminder that in three and a half hours, the ticket sale to Rara Land starts. Don't miss this if you want to come to Germany. I heard that butt crumbs might be coming this year. Damn. Bring all his friends. The butt crumbs, the butt... Uh, <laughs> the uh... entire family. The butt pirate. Yep. <laughs> But soldier. And all, the other, and all the other associates. Looking forward to meeting all of you again at the base stack in Dortmund. Last year was really fun already. This time, going to be even better in summertime. Sun's out, guns out, boys.
Yeah, oh my, I'm gonna gonna bring all my guns, dude. Oh, it's gonna be so marvelous. It'll be so good. I'm gonna flex Knopf away. Easy. Just gonna get in in my beach shape. Uh, I'm still muscle phase right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I imagine. It's just a couple of months away now, you, you can get there. You're gonna Easy. be like a Greek god. You're gonna be Adonis from that day onward. I saw on Knopf's stream, he has a donation going up right now for coming to Rara Land. It is honestly like an insolence that the Swedes haven't shown up once yet. Correct. Unbelievable. It's pathetic. It's disgusting. We had a couple of Swedish visitors at the first Rara Land, but if there's three lands in a row without Knopf, Thorzein, Little DC, Skud, the other guy who builds a lot of towers, uh, Star-shaped, etc. It would be a shame. But they're with Br uh, Bremen Esports now, so maybe that changes something. Let's see. What we'll also see is the game. 1-0 lead for Happy and Fortitude. Let's go! All right, off we are. This is the first map pick for TH and Lim. Turtle Rock will be their choice. Normally we just see a bit of creeping here. So far we saw the Archmages. Getting off to a hot start, level 2 right away, level 3 soon after, and then a lot of brawling might be in store once again. Also, fiend positioning can't be that easy, there's a lot of chokes, right? It's usually a bit one on one -y. What are the spawning positions? We get TH versus Happy and Lin versus Fortitude. Oh yeah, certainly foreshadowing for the winner bracket final later. Mm, I guess... They would have loved to have Lin versus Happy with Farsia Harass and yeah. TH versus 40 in a mirror. It's an MK first, by the way. A TH what? with MK. Wait, what? Yeah. It is, in theory, very good at killing off fiends, stumbles around with footies. The high fiend count for Happy was a real problem. True. But if you don't land those surrounds, if you don't get the kills and the MK falls behind the levels, he can end up as a bit of a liability. Seems like a calculated risk that TH is going for here. Alrighty. Thank you, AMA Credit, for 1,000 bits! Yeah! Baby Remo, Neo, Antlin, and Happy in one stream. Thanks, guys! Don't know why he's calling you Baby Remo, but thank you! Oh, it's yeah, baby. Remo, Neo, Antlin, and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you didn't even get it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. I better, better, better stay quiet. Yeah, MK first here. This is not necessarily the norm. If I saw this right, by the way, in Teach's base, I think he also went for the Black Spot. This looks like it's going to be MK... Rifles, of all things. Well, as I said, he had a week to be creative. <laughs> so that's what he came up with. Thank you, 1,000 bits more by credit for Baby Remo. Lol. Um, 40 is losing some peasants here. Lin's harass is working out fine so far. And usually Happy would soak up this map with, like, ghoul creeping, right? But in 2 and 2, you kind of need fiends. So this makes creeping a little harder. The DK will again be slowed down. Fiends, though, are necessary. Ghouls are just too frail and too weak for fighting in 2v2. AMA credit, thank you again from my side as well. You can call me Baby Remo all day. <laughs> Maybe. Thank you. DK is going to get level 2, though. The Fiend count should be up pretty high. And the observers are struggling right now with the colors and the camera, as it seems. Oh, I wonder no. what Lin is fast hacking to. He has no units at all at the start. And now we're back, boys. All right, all good. Sweet. Thank you very much, Tillerer Joe, for the tier one sub. Hey, guys. Appreciate your effort so much you put into the stream and love for the game. I used to compete in both Walker 3, Reign of Chaos, and TFT over 20 years ago. I'm so excited that the game is still enjoying such a big fan base. Much love from Frankfurt. Damn, Frankfurt, homie. I'm moving basically to Frankfurt uh, next month. Ooh, sick. To the main station? To your friends? Yeah, that's why I got a lot of acquaintances, you know? It's, yeah, it's yeah. Where, 
That's where I make most most of my purchases. <laughs> MK though was creeping really well with the help of some grunts as well. MK already on level three. Is he going to go for clap? Perhaps he will. Doesn't have bash here. Might be a wise choice. Clap in the big 2v2 fights could be a great addition. And the Farsi Harass has worked really well for Lin, right? Kept yeah. both players busy pretty much. And the MK got away with so many creeps. Yeah, really cool strategy that they came up with here on Turtle Rock. And now they're working on the first bigger push. No tier 2 on either of the sides. Supply also looking rather weak, and like, he's just storming into the peasant line. All right. Oh, with the staff and the clap. Staff. Oh my oh, god. Oh, sick. Do that you is remember? Special strats, baby. Do you remember he did this at a GCS yeah, to yeah, Sock, yeah. and he absolutely oh, wow. terrorized him with Mountain King into militia? But Fortitude says, okay, then I'm gonna use all my militia and fight Lit. All the militia have been sent out. Surrounding this Farseer with a million militia. Which is how many will be left after this push is over? And how can they force away the MK in the main? Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a little bit of focus fire, but there's still so much mana. Point. Nice play. Really cool. Very smart by TH. Ah! Uh, can he hold on until he get another clap? I think so, right? Damage is done, man. Sick play by TH. Yeah, they're playing so much time. How do you tier 3 rush for Lin then? I guess you played that before on map 1 as well. Thank you, Commodore Neckbeard, for the 5 gifted subs. Much love! I bet Fortitude would also love to have five gifted subs for his economy. Oh my god. He's using like everything. Yep. This is such a disaster. Yep. Crazy. He can't dude. be touched. He can't be touched, dude. He's still back here. De -de -de -de. De -de -de -de. Can't touch this. That's ridiculous. 40 at 22 supply. What a play. What a sick play by TH. Really impressive. He's such a big brain, man. He's such a big brain. He staffed out again. He had the time to staff out again. He didn't have to use the TP. <laughs> What's the cooldown on the staff? 90 seconds. 90 seconds of unpunished harass. What a god. How do you come back from this economy damage? They certainly have their workout cut work cut out for them this time around. Huge lead for TH and Infi. It all comes down to Happy's tier 3. Happy has to outplay and outmicro these enemy armies. It is only tier 2 armies, so uh, Lin didn't rush tier 3. Instead, he's going Raider Walker this time. Very, very strong tier 2 presence by the Northern team here. Um, it seems like they're going to utilize that to get up an expansion next. Alrighty. We got heal scrolls, big mana, big invul, TPs, ancient Django for fortitude. It's not bad. Trying to go for a not really desperate but greedy play to uh, take one of the biggest camps away. But here are the raiders. Here are the rifles. That's a pretty strong push. And TH must be wondering what have I ever? I mean, fortitude must be wondering what have I ever done to you? Dude? He's back, back yep. around to clap, baby. Hi. Yep, range is pretty big. Sanctum is down. I'm in awe, dude. The streak, the streak is about to be over. I would say so. I'd love to see Happy Destroyer progress. It's really important. I, I we can see the tech actually. The tier 3 is still far away. Yep. Oh my god, dude. This is such a disaster. Amazing. Now he opens up the base so the enemy Mountain King can come in. Makes it a little... Wait. Can he even get out? Oh, There's a... Is he dead? Is he dead? Yeah, he might be. 
Use the staff now. Can can you not staff out? Ah, it's on cooldown. Okay. Yeah. It can still clap away though. Still a bunch of space created. Don't let him get out, dude. There's no, only one no, peasant no, here. No, no, no. no Don't no, let no, him no. leave. In one. Wait. Might get out. No way. No, no, no. No, forty is making sure that this is not happening. Is he though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our oh, staff. Stoneball is. No. <gasps> Hammer. Staff is ready. Staff now. Oh! Oh! He might have had the time. Ah, would have been close. Happy had the TP out as well. He lost a fiend, killed a hero. This was like two armies versus one. But the time has been bought. The expo is up. Yep. And TA just getting rich. Alrighty, needs a good amount of gold to get the hero back, but he did that already. Tech advantage now, of course, for Happy and 40. A little bit of a backstab, still competing for this. I'm pretty sure, yep, they got the big one again, just like it happened to fly before. Item on Lindo, and that's a clause plus 12. But this is not over yet. 40 is in the dumps though. True. 30 supply only. His peasants were completely wrecked. And also he lost the sanctum, remember? Yep. That one was destroyed. Can't produce at the moment, I think. I don't think he made a new one. Happy can win against two players at the same time though. He showed it before in some 2-2 two and two competition. And wasn't it TH and Lin? The Lost Temple game, Chad. Crypt Lord Third is always a fun addition for the 2v2s. MK is back with an Invul Potion. Let's go. <laughs> Happy though. TP's in. Expecting Ooh. a fight to be breaking out here. Did you see my sick impale against Black Rayman on Thursday? No. Oh. I placed such a wonderful impale, dude. It's on our Instagram stories. Check it out. So proud. This clap is also pretty good. MK starts off the fight doing a lot of damage right away. And we have a blizzard transition. I like that a lot. Oh no, it's not transition actually. So, Archmage second, of course, with the blizzard. Mountain King takes lots of damage and snare on a destroyer and it takes that one out. Really important. No dispel at the moment for Happy and 40 until now. New Destroyer has been morphed, at least no statues now, however. MK is really strong, but outside of the MK and Blizzard, damage is a bit low on their side. Okay, not as easy as one might have thought before, but that Crypt Lord almost out of mana. Sick AoE, of course. Water Elementals are getting dispelled. Good XP. Clap on the other side now, too, but I. Might just be a numbers game at this point. 42 cripple, 20 food ahead. And 40 is also forced into a town portal. That town hall, I've seen a lot of portals today. Oh, look at the shop though. Come on, baby. Regent scroll. Oh! Dude, the value in 2v2 is insane. And also, clarity's for happy if he's allowed some. The expansion, of course, is still mining on the other side. I wonder if. If he's given some money, Lin could perhaps afford tier 3. Oh, he could definitely afford tier 3. Look at the gold. Lin, a thousand gold. Wasn't spending it for a long time. Now he does. Invul, heal scrolls. But I don't know if he's going tier 3 yet. Saving it for some bad times. Now we spend it. Lots of heal scrolls indeed. Mana potion, town portal. Wait, Lin doesn't even have a town portal. What's he spending the gold on? Maybe swapped it over. Ah, heal scroll now. And tier 3 on TH. Inner fire rifles, baby. And maybe oh, even, yeah. I don't know, knights, mortars, tri hero, paladin, all that good stuff. The team play is going to be very important, by the way, in these fights. Uh, Lin's target with the ensnare should be the destroyers, but he can't kill them. He has to ensnare them, but it's going to be TH who has to pick them off with the rifles. It's going to be up to Happy to try to stay out of range. It's going to be very difficult to micro this perfectly. The gold lead is growing. The supply lead is already immense. And this map is looking better and better for T. H. and Lin. Who? What Pally is... Third is going to be amazing as well. Yo! We should go for it. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the goal. Blood Mage could also be sick, of course. All the human heroes, fantastic in two and two. Oh, it's a little hot there, Lin. Or he was uh, waving his hand. Like, oh. Need to cool down a little bit after all that action. Oh, yeah, they're basically waiting for 40 and happy to come, right? There's no reason to push anymore. Yeah. Time is on their side. They're not down in tech anymore either. I wonder if knights would be a good addition. No, 40. Oh, 40. Is he lagging out? Uh -oh. This would be a weird position for the admins. Oh. I think the Chinese admins, they're always giving regame. That would be so unlucky for them. Yo, that would be rough for THLN. They are far ahead though. Far yeah, ahead. Really far ahead. It's hard to put a number on it, but I would say 80% win at least. Well, maybe they should give the win here if it's really a disconnect. Huh. Oh, that reminds me, dude. No, did don't tell. No, no. Did we do? No, <laughs> don't remind us. That was a that was a turtle rock game. <laughs> it was a turtle rock game. It was a two hour break. Because of a situation like this. Yeah, thanks Blizzard again for uh, not having a resume from replay feature. That would be Funny lovely. thing is, I guess TH is the admin here. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I don't know if he's still involved. Maybe he could just say, that game was over, boys. Yep. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that one's in. Yeah, I, I, I think it would make sense to just... Give them the win here. They were so far ahead. It would seem unfair if 40 is the one lagging out, gets the regame then when he was so far behind. He was getting endlessly abused. Yeah. That was an unbelievably painful game for 40. Unrecoverable, really. Beautiful play by Lin and TH, man. Yeah. Farseer created so much space, deserves a medal for his sacrifice in that early game. MK got away with so much, got level 3 so quick, and that... Clap harass a TH special deciding that game pretty much. That's really, I haven't seen that in such a long time, and that's so so iconic because I have never seen a human mirror like this. Where Ma like Mountain King first in human mirror was already extraordinary, then opening clap in a time where clap was considered the bad spell on a Mountain King, believe it or not. Yeah, and then he just smashed sock with it. It was so brutal. The clap a while ago had even more AoE. Those were the heyday of the Mountain King. Yeah, Matt Morris Day. There was a lot of hay involved, I can tell you that. <laughs> Three second involved on the Keeper Ultimate. Good times. Dude, early days of Keeper Alchemist <laughs> were so insane, dude. That was, that, was, that was the most Imba the game has ever been, probably. Well, I mean, there used to also be a time in Reign of Chaos with goblin landmines which were pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's the two peaks like very very early days of warcraft 3 with like fortified ancients of war even when uprooted oh my god fortified when uprooted true and piercing oh. damage shaman and stuff that was sick but then oh, comes the matt Lord. morris era that's second worst what was the other worst thing about Matt Morris outside of Keeper or Alchemist? Well, Keeper is enough. Then he created the new Terranus stand with 700 billion big consumables that you can creep oh, on yeah. level one. And when you couldn't see the creeps, you were getting hexed by the big renegade. Polymorphed. Jesus Christ, that was so bad. I oh, and there was this one spot behind the main base where you could put towers on the high ground. Yep. <laughs> like, I... Cut a lot of people, a lot of slack in that Reforge team, but Matt Morris did a lot of bad stuff. Oh well. I'm sure he learned and improved. If only he had some, like, counselors, right, who would give him feedback that he could write down and, like, 
apply then or even think about that would be something right like to broadcast I mean, of this game maybe that he could meet in person or something they uh pulled back on some of the changes it just took them a few months you know Dude, you gotta take your time yeah in november was blizzcon right and i still follow matt morris on twitter and he's like radio silence since the reforged release and then when when blizzcon came around he posted a selfie like um, the guess who's back? I'm like, no, 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 no! Go away, move as far oh, away from rough. all games as possible. Bah, bah. Yeah, I remember when Skip came into the team. He came from StarCraft, I think. He did a lot of good things. Yes, Skip uh, did a lot of good stuff. Took a, lot, took a long time though. Hey, hey, hey. We have the announcement here on stream. Uh, indeed, TH Ooh. and Lin were declared the winners of Map Two. That's fair. That was such a huge lead. Yes. So we're tied up. 1-1. One, one. Exactly. Like, you, you can always make the argument, yeah, they had a chance in a big fight. But in the end, you're responsible for your connection. And if you're behind, then I think Warcraft admins are very, very fair and always looking for an entertainment perspective and give re-games when it's reasonable. But you also make a precedent, like, whenever you're behind, just pull the cord and then there's regame that cannot happen as well so reasonable decision good decision the right decision if the back to warcraft broadcaster team would have done the same you're always on the right side so well done w a l admits well done tita thank you for the sub the first time ever prime sub welcome to the prime is squad. prime is no crime sub to the dub indeed I still and cringe that, when I say that, dude. Jesus Christ, it's so bad. It's so bad. Just keep saying it until the cringe wears off, Neil. Right. Yeah, that's what keep I'm kind of trying to do, but it's... Keep it up. Every day it's like a new dagger to the heart. <coughs> Just one of our... One of many painful moments. You'll get over it. True. One of our the joyful calling. moments is going to be map three because yes. it's one of our favorites. Shattered best. Exile, baby. Shattered Exile. In my mind... From an entertainment perspective, second best map of all time. Right behind Twisted. Oh. oh. Right behind Twisted. Granted, I haven't seen that many games because it was rotated out and few tournaments use it. But I am in deep, deep, deep love with Shadow Exile. Yeah, I love this map as well. I think it's really well made. It's beautiful. And finally, it's a unique map. It doesn't follow the same pattern, the similar pattern of, you know... Uh, middle center control and you have to be around and the medium size the kind of last refuge introduced lots of maps since then have been semi last refuge clones but it is a great map of course shared exile brings something new and i am all for novelty as long as that is not completely broken you know and shared exile yeah i would love to see more of this map both in 2v2 and in 1v1 we have seen it uh, last year i think in uh, some of the war 3 champions games but very few only so still this has an exotic taste to it. Right on. You know, yesterday was a map makers community circus tournament with a lot of crazy rules, a lot of crazy maps, etc. Right? And Carson was casting. And in the final, there was a two and two. And they played on the map Adrenaline Rush. Have you ever seen the map Adrenaline Rush? I know the name. It Am is, I have seen it in one of the Hive Cups or something? Maybe. It is crazy. It is a four-player map. And you spawn in the middle. All four players. The, <laughs> oh, say. In the middle is a mana fountain. And then the bases are like uh, north, east, south, and west of that mana fountain. So you can brawl all the time. It was so much fun. Absolute chaos. Like. <laughs> Big love for Adrenaline Rush. And there's so much creativity honestly that uh, could be exploited by the mapping community they have done really well already over the years the problem is they would often like to get more creative but uh, much of the scene is very hesitant to accept changes i still can't believe that for example we're playing turtle rock instead of like uh shallow grave springtime they sometimes picked it up but then they dropped it again yep they also the poor map makers held back by the powers that be, by the War 3 champions Cabal. <laughs> Gotta loosen yeah, up cabal. a little bit. Yeah. It's, uh, the puppet masters in the back. They're holding the poor mapmakers community back. There was a big discussion. How much HP should a gate have? 
and that went for three months. <laughs> Good thing that one thing is clear, though, and that is that Last Refuge shall, shall stay in the map pool forever until the end of days, <laughs> until Doomsday is here and Jesus Christ, our Savior, <laughs> returns. Because... <laughs> Come on, Remo. It's just 14 years of Last Refuge. I think it's longer, actually. But right around there. 14 to 15 Was introduced years. in the late stages of ESL Pro Series, I remember. And back then we were like, damn, dude, this is a really good map. It's so Sick. good. Who it's made so this? It's so good. And it's true. It is a really good map. Like yeah. I said a bunch of times in the past, I think it was the first really well-made map ever. But it's been a long, around for a long, long time. That's right. It's time. They can they put it to rest. But the play rate is so high. Yeah, the play rate is so high because everybody knows it. Ivan Kirkov, comedy. Thank you very much for the tier one sub. Seven months in a row. Thank you for the great work, guys. Best channel on the internet. Won't argue and with that. Ivan, thank you very much for those kind words. Thank you for the support. Glad you're enjoying it. I can understand that you, under, uh, that you enjoy the show here because these are the best players in the world. Earlier, we saw Happy victorious in the 1v1. Now in the 2v2, we are tied up. The score is 1-1. We had, unfortunately, a disconnect on map 2, but the result still stands. And we should be almost ready to jump into map 3. It's actually getting kind of close with the Rara Land ticket sale. It's definitely getting incredibly close for me to get groceries. Couldn't you order, like, from uh, Flink or whatever it's called to bring you something? Dude, I'm living in such a rural area. I have ah, yeah, right. You're living nothing in here. now. Might be three days of uh, gas station frozen pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that happened before. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Do they have some decent frozen pizza at least? Oh, by the way, nope, reminds nope. me. We had a discussion about frozen pizza not long ago. Yep. You told me that the Lagusto, whatever it's called, yep. is the best one. Yep. I tried that, and I think it really is good. I still prefer the Ofenfrische, though. Really? Say. Yeah. Odd. Just but me. I learned that a lot of people have a different taste in pizza than I have. But I like that you That's like true. it. That's true, Mr. Pineapple Pizza. It's the best. It's the best. What can I say? I never see it on frozen pizza, though. It's rare to see it on frozen pizza, it right? It is rare. It's a problem. It's a big problem in the frozen pizza uh, community. community. In which you are a deeply entrenched part. Yes, yes. I created a forum. I've been a certified member for years. I'm the owner of that. But, yeah. Damn, you need to get some changes done about, frozen, uh, about pineapple pizza. Got to force it on all the supermarkets. Got to close it down if they don't have frozen pizza with pineapples. I don't know when that became such a big topic. I think people are just repeat like the people learned that on Nine Gag in two thousand nine that oh my god pineapple man. pizza is apparently disgusting and now they still repeat it because the Warcraft community is so old and boomer like. Did I just I just typed in ninegag.com. It's still a thing. Yeah, of course. <sighs> Half of our audience probably visiting daily. You know what? They got they got nine gag liked on Facebook, and that's how they get their memes. That's our community. Brings me back to my teenage days, dude. I remember when I was doing civil service in the hospital. That's when I was using nine gag. It's who the hell uses this these days? Is it the boomers by now? It is, dude. I mean, we are on the pulse of time. Scrolling TikTok every day. But these guys in the chat or people who are not even in the chat. Yeah, they are like 10, 15 years behind us. They're still living that early 2000 life. Well, we're still living uh, the waiting game here. That's Apparently, right. Oh, wait, just as I said it, I summoned the game with the will of my mind. We are ready now. It's not live for me yet. I got to reload. Yeah. Reload, oh. reload. There we go. Alrighty. It is 1-1. One, one. We're down to a best of three. And we're on Shattered Exile. Guess we talked about that at length now. Expansions between the bases. Relatively easy to creep. Uh, this also means that we will probably contest the mercenary camps as 
That mercenary camp has assassins, and assassins are really good. They got nerfed, but they're still pretty good. That's right. Assassino! Yeah, they used to have faster move speed, which made them really insane, to be honest. That was a good nerf, actually. Shout out, Blizzard. You messed up a lot, but that was good. They were too strong. They still have Shadow Melt. They still have Poison. They're still really good. But along with that, they used to be fast as well. Now they're a little bit slower. Makes them more fair. <laughs> this is the map pick, of course, of uh, TH and Happy. An unusual map. I wonder if they got something special lined up here. I would certainly expect expansions here. It was kind of funny at the beginning of the game. They had Lin and Happy side by side in the player camera. And Lin smiling, vibing, really in the mood. Happy wants to get this over with as quickly as possible as every game. Ah, oh, the joy. Look at him. He's so happy to play this game. Behind Lin also we saw, I see the classic Pokemon gang. Bulbasaur, Charmander and Squirtle. Charmander as the most amazing one, of course, in the middle. Lin has good taste. Someone last week, Remo, made the case that Bulbasaur is the best starter. I banned that person from our chat. That was the right call, right? Bro, I gotta say there's a point. If you're what? going for efficiency, if you're going for efficiency, Bulbasaur is amazing for early game. You can get like sick early game tempo with Bulbasaur. Squirtle he smacks better. around the first two gym leaders. Let's not start this. We have a Mountain King once again. TA shifting the meta away from Archmage. Because that worked tremendously. This time though, Mountain King expansion. And the team on the western side still taking a little bit of time. But of course expansion here as well. This is what Shadow Exile is known for. But it's also kind of surrounded by two laboratories. Which could mean a lot of sappers. Yeah, true. Uh, I kind of forgot about that. In the War 3 Champions uh, finals, we saw a lot of fun sapper plays. You can get quite explosive on this map if you desire. It is Lin again with the early harass play. The Farseer trying to create space here. And the first time that TH will try an expan... Uh, I mean, Foy will try an expansion. Both are. Archmage kind of hurt on 40's side. But rushing across as well, put a dent into that game, trying to force some expanses here and to slow that Mountain King down because we've seen on Turtle Rock how disruptive that MK can be. And he's on a good way, 2.7. Both expansions here, pretty vulnerable at the moment. Lin again finds the opening, gonna be able to take out some peasants here pretty easy. Hack was trying to get across the map, but then falls back, hesitant, doesn't know where he's supposed to go. Oh, and looks like Lin is able to stop this expansion just with a handful of units. Sweet harass, really good timings. In the meantime, Arcane Tower for TH is up, Water Elemental Arrest doesn't do too much, DK and Fiends also gotta be careful, cause that Mountain King has full mana and a pendant. Here's the first clap. Footies feel the pain right away, and it's going to force a TP home by the Farseer, but Lin had a great early game here. It's going to help with the defense now. The three Grunts are really good this early against the Fiends. And people have to kite. The Grunts are going to buy time. And this seems like a really good start for Infi, uh, for TH and Lin. There we go. Messing it up. There's too many names here. There's too many names. That's right. <laughs> Oh, twice as many names, eh? Twice the chance to get things wrong. Mountain King is right where he's at, though, with more clap. Catches a coil, doesn't really do too much, cancels the regen a little bit. In the meantime, Happy continues the arrest, and TH a little sloppy with that militia. Yeah, but you're gonna go down here. I guess the tower is also gonna fall. The piercing damage working out well. This is a lot of peasant kills in the end, but the MK can now look for key pickoffs. With the Storm Bolts against the Fiends, that's a strong weapon. And now the Hex is out as well. And Hex, very powerful, of course, early on tier 2. But happy with a fast start on this Death Knight. Level 3, right out the gate. Loves to coil away. Of course, levels for Lin pretty abysmal. But there's still lots to creep, lots to catch up. As they have the base advantage, and that puts Fortitude and Happy on a timer. 
after their first loss in the tournament. Wonder if they can recover. I'll be rushing tier three right away. It's a lich second. We'll see what the third hero will be. The cryptoid didn't work out too amazingly, really. Um, got off a few impales. They weren't even too well placed. I feel like that's the one thing Happy doesn't have enough practice with, maximizing impales. Yeah, I can coach him if he needs. Just hit me up, Happy. My impales, great. Like, that's the one thing I can do in Warcraft. Impales. Maybe you should sub to our Patreon, then we can get the coaching. That's right. You should suggest it. You can send him a DM or are you blocked again. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't last time, surprisingly, so <laughs> <laughs> I may have been unblocked. <laughs> oh, it's still the, so funny oh. to me that you got blocked by assassin. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one, I'm in good company. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right, it's still funny. Oh, that assassin by Lin. It's not gonna assassin much. Getting assassin aided. Ooh, sick timing Speed by two. On the MK, yeah, nice. He's going into Happy's main, trying to kill off Acolytes, trying to cancel the tech. This is so sick, dude. Tier just disruptive play. Has been looking amazing. Should be getting at least one more Acolyte. Oh, and now a difficult decision for Happy. Is he going to go through with the tech or not? Looks like it. I mean, 40 can still pass him some resources to make up for that. Actually, though, actually saving all the other Acolytes, maybe. No, there's one more Stormboard. Hammer to the face, and another one! Oh, Ooh. no. Crucial Acolyte to save. But there's more mana. There's plenty more mana. Also a town portal. He can stay, but doesn't. But that was a lot of mining time. And that's twice as bad, because there's an expansion running for TH and Lin. Yeah, seems like kind of a similar game once again to the previous map, where we have a lot of Econ Harass. That previous map was won through superior resources. And TH and Lin are very much on a similar trajectory once again. Oh, Heavy would love to creep a bit to get the Lich level up. I don't think that's gonna be allowed though. Rune Braces for the Mountain King on 40 side. Heal scroll available by Lin already. Closing in on double level three. <laughs> And then this is going to play the harass game here. Mass Raiders going to threaten the base attack all the time. There might not be any opportunity for Happy and 40 to get across the map. They're keeping them contained. Good play so far. He does have a downside though. Lin's army for fighting is trash. He's only good against buildings really. Alright. Maybe TH can make up for that. And of course, hero focus could be crazy with Chain Lightning, Stormbolt, and Yui Snare Hex. In case you haven't seen it, there was a map in the quarterfinal. 23 hero kills. Glorious, glorious Warcraft. They pulled the army apart a little bit. Still playing the economical game. And we basically have two one-on-ones. My least favorite kind of... Two and two, actually, when it's just split. But it's an understandable uh, decision. Try and doing that, because then there's no combined push coming. And we get double tier three on Lin and TH. That almost seems a bit greedy, right? Seems like they're giving the enemy team most of the opportunity to go for a big timing attack before the tier three has really paid off. But if they have the time, if they can get all those upgrades in, it is going to be great value as well. Double rune bracers on Happy and 40. Is that relevant? It might be against his MK later. Question, Mr. Remo Demo, since I really don't know. If you hex a hero that has the rune bracers, is the magic damage reduction still applying or not? I don't know that either. I think it does though, right? Because you still have the. You still have the hero armor thing, so you don't get ultra nuked. Yeah, but is it the rune braces damage reduction? Yeah. I don't think so, actually. I don't know. 
chair. Oh, Zeppelin. Uh oh. Oh, don't lose it above the trees, dude. Ooh, that was almost a disaster. <laughs> Lynn Zeppelin plays or Orc Zeppelin plays have been outstanding. Shadowhunter dies last second. Okay, slowly but steady. Fortitude and Happy are finding a way back, but they are down attack as they caught up with an expansion themselves. No, there's no movement. So there's... Is it just a tower or something? It's gonna get killed. I would love to see the left-hand side. But whatever it is, it won't matter too much. Liquid fire, dude. Yep. He's making liquid fire. <laughs> he clearly doesn't want to fight. Oh, great catch here by Lin. Gets the casters with the end snares. Oh, that's so many kills. And you said this army can't fight. Dominating! Dominating the priests! Turns out, the units that don't do damage, he can! <laughs> so well done there. Oh, and look at that, we have double cannon towers up over at the expansion. Very cracked, uh, very difficult for Hap to crack this one. But he's gonna give it a crack, regardless. Speed scrolls being used here, plenty. And he comes like fire bats. Haven't bottom. seen this in a while from Mr. Lane. Oh, happy. First he's getting haunted by Mass Wyvern, and now he thought, oh, maybe in 2 and 2 I can catch a break from that pesky orc play, but nope. Not when your opponent is Lin. There is a push or a little bit of harass on the right-hand side. It's not crazy damage, though. Look, not even too many peasants falling. Dark Ranger is helping out to a degree. But yeah, what can you do outside of peasant damage? This seems way worse as Lin is dropping, killing acolytes. Was aiming for the Haunted Goldmine. Happy shuts that down quite fast. But it's time bought. Oh, he's blocked. Oh, he has to sell the narrow. It has been pretty painful, though, honestly, for. TH and Lin, they've been losing lots of peasants, zeppelins, units here and there. They're trying to buy time, of course, for the northern expansion. That one is not up and ready yet. Tier 3, of course, done on both sides. Question is, what are they going to do with it? We have the triple hero now. MK, AM, Pally, very strong. Combination all around. But Lin doesn't have a third hero yet. Could go for TC, could go for Pit Lord. We have Blizzard coming. Oh, the AoE is ramping up. Nova Blizzard clap on the one side. Chain Lightning Blizzard clap on the other. Dude, Lin is this also is like fortifying the 6 p.m. position. This looks like Infi playing, dude. There's towers coming up absolutely <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Infinite towers. That's what it used to be known as. You think TH is leading Lin to play like his old friend, you know? In my in my former relationship, my girlfriend used to do this and this. That's always a great idea actually to do mm -hmm. like, new relationships. So. Right? Yeah, might might be that might be the play. It's, especially when you have a fight and then you the best thing you could say is, "Oh, my old girlfriend, she wasn't as much of a drama queen as you are." Best. Yeah. Best. If you want to get more relationship advice from Neo, just sub to our Patreon. He's going to coach you there as well. There we go. Oh my god, so many towers, dude. <laughs> this has got endless gold. <laughs> they must have seen Happy versus Fly on Twisted and thought, yep, a lot of gold mines is a very good idea. The northern base is not too well fortified. It's only two cannon towers and an arcane, so that could be break broken pretty easily, especially with the blizzard. But once the attack here hits, I'm pretty sure Lin is going to drop into the main base. In fact, seems like he's doing that right now. Do, 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 drop the bases. How long can Happy with uh, sustain these TPs is the question. A couple of losses here and there. Blizzard still doing a bit. But these cannon towers are so sturdy, man. At the same time, we got 40's base under assault. Mining here has been halted for now. Oh. 
Not the crazy big fights that we saw on the first weekend. Yep. More strategic. More poking. More splitting. This might actually work. Lin is in position again. Still doesn't have that strong of an army to quickly take out buildings. There's no shockwave, for example. What's he building? Wyver. Oh, okay. Big air army works in the end. All right, human mirror in the north. Unfortunately for TH, Forty is the best human mirror player in the world. And so there's not much of a chance, but it's all time to hurt Happy. And another drop into 40's Expo. That Chain Lightning was a thing of beauty. Tower oh. down, TP out. Oh, SH. Oopsie. Kind of a painful loss. And now Lin isn't that rich anymore. He spent his bank up at 70 supply though. Huge army. And the supply lead is with TH and Lin, but not by that much. Not certainly the same as last map. That's right, and the spells are kind of crazy. Still four bases versus two and a half-ish. Happy's levels are getting a bit out of control, but it's only a Dark Ranger. The silence can be good, of course, in these fights, but yeah, these towers. Look at the wizard. AM damage, nicely stacking up. And mortar teams. They have a good army here to crack through these towers. Lin and TH have to react. Closing in on 12k damage. We got gyros. Is that the big army? The supply lead is big, but not crazy. Okay, here we go. Huge AOE. Let's go. Blizzard clap everywhere. Wyvern's still in the air. Not enough weapons. He had to take out the gyros as well. Oh man, this is so chaotic. Yeah, huge fight, man. The AOE, like you correctly said, absolutely reigning supreme. But mana is a limiting factor. 42 doesn't have too much more in the MK, especially in the front line. Invo Potion had to be used to keep him safe, but now he is safe. And now they're finding a lot of kills. Epi and 40 might be making the comeback happen. As the DK also gets level 5, the Undead Hero levels indeed now very, very strong. Next, he supplied also with the Brilliant Sword. We have a fire shop up, so regen coming, clarity is running. Not having Blizzard to like the levels for TH are abysmal. This is really, really bad. Happy is of course crazy. Archmage for 40 as well. They got so many kills in the middle of that game. Trying to bait a little bit with ensnares while the healing is running, but mortar teams are doing a fine job. Archmage could follow this up. Round two. Taking out a bunch of towers already, and back in we go once more. The Blizzard is doing amazing work and oh. getting high up there in the damage counter. And so many kills going happy and 40s way. It seems like they're not losing much. The break of frontline is looking really good. Oh, Pally in trouble as well. Barely gets out, getting healed once more. Dark Ranger, oh, she's in the front. She might be in trouble. There's a coil to save her. And it seems like 40 and happy just getting way more kills. Though, oh, MK caught. Finally, after the third attempt, TH and, Infi, uh, TH and Lin get a kill here, but their Mountain King in trouble as well. Oh, just gets out with the team. Oh, can they still hold this? I'm not too sure. Supply very, very even with attack lead on TH and Lin, but the levels speak a clear language. A kingdom for a heal scroll now. Region scroll has to do it. Wonder if they ate a lot with these Kodos. Hard to say. That expo is so good, dude. The Brilliant are up for the Undead here, not just the heroes, but also the statues. They're never running out of juice. True. Dem I wonder if there's another expansion coming up in the north. Just as a backup. Even if it is, I don't know if it's enough. 40 and Happy have taken the supply lead. Looks like they just have the strictly better army. And 40 is about to double level up as well. And MK, close to doing it. Lin now transitioning into more of a base race play with the Raiders. He can try to do it, trying to take out the expansion here, forcing the TP once more. But his own expo has been taken care of. It is, and there's another unit in the north where TH was expanding. Only a militia though, but they got the information and 40 will do a good job and 
clobber that down again. No bank anymore for TH and Lin. Stuck at 130 food. Supply lead, happy and 40. Level lead, happy and 40. And probably a gold lead as well, since TH and Lin were the first to expand. Now we see the Orc human army charging across the map. It is a big force, certainly. But it also means Clap Blizzard could be even stronger. Break it in the front line, Fiends behind it. Happy and Forty get the first couple of pickoffs here. The Wyvern webbed are great targets, quickly getting taken out. And the Blizzard, oh my god, perfectly placed. P -p perfectly placed with the Clap. Unreal. Hoo -hoo -hoo. No Raiders here to stop that. That's a wipe on the TC. Cow is dead. Blizzard is doing extraordinary damage numbers here. The mortar teams are so safe in the back. No frag shards, but still fine. Knights usually dominating fights. Not against Clap Blizzard, though. Not enough healing. No heal scroll inventory for TH and Lin. Empty. And it looks like that's the game. Yeah. Man, they were far ahead. But they fed Happy and 40 a little bit too much. And heroes take over. GG, 40 with the big smile and happy going into another room to celebrate. Yeah, a very d different look on our two players here, but they still, despite their differences, seem to make a great team. That was a really strong comeback. Man, this was a tough position, right? For to try to expand, that didn't work. Lin's faster harass play was perfectly on point. Was exactly in the right position at the right time. Also then came back to help TH defend his own expansion. And we had an Expo lead for a long, long while. Maybe a bit too greedy to go double tier three. It seemed like especially TH, it slowed down a lot. He was stuck with low level heroes for a long while. The MK, not so much, but the AM and Pally for him. Maybe just going for a tier two army could have been better, but that is kept in hindsight speaking. That doesn't do them any favors now. They need to deliver on map four. Uh, if not, that's going to be the last one for the tournament. All righty. Match points, that is. But that was loser's pick for Happy and 40. Twisted is next. And on that map, split pushes might work. We've seen a lot of Twisted Meadows early on. There was 40 minutes. But can you ever get enough of Twisted Meadows? I could cast only Twisted Meadows games for an entire week. And I would still ask for more. That's how good Twisted Meadows is. It is one of the pearls of Warcraft 3, that's for sure. It was there before Amazonia. Thankfully, it's also there after Amazonia. How dare you say Twisted Metals and Amazonia in the same sentence? It is a great reminder, Neil. Great reminder of, for our viewers to illustrate how terrible maps can be and how great they can be. And twist it is. I think Shared Exile also looked very interesting with a gold mine between the two bases. We saw both players uh, are very much aware that an early expansion is a viable strategy. Similarly, that is also the case on Twisted Meadows. There is an open gold mine, an available gold mine position between the two bases. Although in the 2v2s I've seen on Twisted, I said that yesterday already, I've almost never seen, I've almost never been seeing lately the fast expo on Twisted. Maybe it slows down your creeping a little bit too much. It might halt you a bit uh, in the level progress. We'll see if that's going to be an option. Exactly. Uh, a couple of years ago, this was always two one-on-ones with then mostly one big clash. We'll see if that's still the case or if they find different solutions. It's all about mercenary camps against the human water elementals, of course, but TH was playing Mountain King first twice. I wonder if it's time to step away from that again. It was really good on Turtle Rock, on Shattered Exile hurt them in the end because no high level brilliance or no high level blizzard archmage is the it's kind of crazy archmage is the better late game hero yeah am super strong also not just late game but early game as well for tempo with water elemental is also fast at building and can look for kills and can creep really quick and we saw by 40 the blizzard transition late game dude he had such sick damage output paired with the clap it looked amazing he was leading the charts by a mile and especially with undead Dude, Brilliant Zora with Undead is so crazy. Love this pairing that they're showing here. That's the way the Undead should be. Maybe in the next patch, we're going to get an Undead Archmage and finally uh, get back to 
the old strength again. Thank you, Zushine, for the 12 month. Happy subversary. Reminds me of a gorilla song. Is that where your nickname is coming from? That would be sweet. I, I don't know what you're referring to. Are they still a band? Didn't they also? Well, it's like one up? guy, right? It's the guy from Blur. Wait, it's only one guy? Yeah, I mean, he has... If they tour, he has, like, musicians for hire, but it's only one guy. Ah, oh, okay. Didn't know that. Oh, I am always happy to educate you, Remo. We got a game. Right. Uh, educate me now. It is an MK again for TH. What does that tell us? That he thinks uh, that's the better choice. MK has been looking quite strong at times. I wonder if it might be smarter, if it might be smarter for for it to, to not wall his space off, that really backfired on him earlier when the MK stabbed in and ruined his day on Turtle Rock. I guess in theory, he could go for a Zeppelin this time. By the way, um, from the position spawn wise, it seems like um, Tia should be able to go for an easy lab, whereas for 40, that's not the case because that will be close to the opponent. That's right. I'd still say mercenary camps are more important, and that's exactly what TH is doing. Great minds think alike. Shadow Priest, too good. Big consumable can be incredible. And looks like 40 is also going rather towards the mid with a green spot first. But that should be a nice little power spike for TH and I was about to say Infi and Lin in the early game. I know that feel. The wolf harass here early shouldn't do too much as happy as a bunch of fiends out already. I think he was rushing three fiends every time so far, even for the tech. That's really good for early damage output and be safe against harass. But it does slow down that tier two progress, as we've been seeing. Okay, small little harass here. Archmage and Farsia meet each other. That's a lot of freedom then for Happy and TH. Ooh, are we... Are we going for an expo? We're certainly moving south. Uh, call in the boys. I guess we are. A bit of a later timing. I think he was trying to creep another camp first to then have level 3 to then have the powerful tools defend the expansion. There's a scout moving south. Could be a skeleton. As also 40 is going for the mercs. Take out the enemy farm here. They might be lining up the pressure timing. 40 getting the berserker as well. For a pressure timing that is really sweet. And they got a lot of information. Oh. Wait, this is even enough for MK3? If it's not, that could be a bit painful. Uh, no, it isn't. But he is very close. Why oh, are you so far ahead of me again? There we go. Archmage being hurt quite a bit. But should be able to recover quickly. Yo, this expansion play is certainly a liability. 40 and Happy could create a timing where they either counter expand. As 40 is also still on. Oh no, he's attacking now. Um, or just push it. They got double burzies, right? They got double one burzies. for 40, one for Happy. This could be a really strong timing. But Happy's pretty hurt already. This would be the perfect moment for a ritual dagger. Oh, DK level 3 as well. Scroll of the Beast, double berserker. Oh, <laughs> oh what oh. elemental! <laughs> Yo! The dream team of Lin and TH could find their end here if this push is too crazy. Yeah, they wait for the second heroes, but the MK can find some free kills now. He's caught the footman, took out one already, he's gonna get a second. And any kill he had gotten earlier is a big deal. And maybe a bit of a mistake by Furitu to have his footies down here. He was trying to harass the peasants, but that didn't work out at all. Lost two for free. <laughs> Still trying to creep a little bit, trying to position around the tavern. Maybe an indicator for second hero choices. 
Archmage still missing level 3 for 40. Trying to get there, but Lin is here to disrupt this with a Shadow Hunter. The Hex now, of course, dangerous, as we've seen plenty of times before. There is one source of Dispel from the Shadow Priest. Must be an important unit to try to keep alive. 40 and Happy falling back. They know time is against them with the enemy expansion, but they have to wait still for the second heroes, I guess. 40's tier 2 is done. What is the second hero? I don't know. I'm pretty certain they started second heroes because they're so broke. The item here, Ring of the Arc Magi. Stake 40 may want to pass over some items. Oh, the blacksmith is late. Wait. There's a lumber mill. Oh, it's not late. Cancelled the blacksmith. Lumber mill. I think that was blacksmith, bro. Lumber mill. <laughs> I don't think so. Happy's going tier 3. He's got a tower in his main, awaiting an attack. This is what Tiet has been doing basically this whole series. Hit the opponent in the main base, disrupt the economy, be annoying, make it painful. And that's attack cancelled. Sweet. Great, great, great timing. This didn't necessarily work too well on Shattered Exile. Here on Twisted, it does. And that shifts the timing, of course, further back. And that's exactly what Lin and TH want. Rune Bracers, kinda nice. They got a Scroll of the Beast to counter the enemy Scroll of the Beast. And maybe you have to shift gears now if you're happy and 40 and go for an expansion himself. Yeah, it does seem like TH and Lin here are getting ahead in this mid game. Creeping continues. Levels will be of crucial importance. And especially the MK, who's close to level 4 here for Mr. TH, should be looking quite impressive later on. Hmm. Bit of creep craft. What? Might be a bit of a backstab. Nice pick up. And here we go. Walkers and raiders. Better army this time on Lin's side. This spell is sweet! Lots of XP against 40. He has to TP out from this little ambush. It's also another 3 for the Shadow Hunter. Very strong timing over here that we saw for Lin. And TH is again trying to buy time with his own MK. He's level 4. He's looking for the kills again against the Acolytes. Happily is trying to react quickly. Did he get the item? From the camp, yeah. Belt. The DK is very tanky. This would be sick cryptoid items, by the way. Oh yeah. Also it's against time. raiders, kinda nice. We do have the prophesized one-on-ones with Lin versus 40. Oh, Mountain okay. King. Heal potion last second. All right. It's of course foreshadowing. They still have to play a best of five for the grand final later. Mountain King say. Yeah, 40 was getting kind of owned here, but it's looking a bit better now, I guess. Oh, in the north. There might be an expansion attempt. There's some red dots up there. I wonder if that's 40 trying to expand. But the scouting from him is just outstanding. And now he's finding the ended army. He knows there's no tech. There's no destroyers here. They're playing a really good form. Yeah, that is super sweet. Obsidian statue taken out as well. Uh, there were some red dots, but there were also some teal dots and footmen beat peasants. And so there's no expansion. TH is also catching up in tech. Getting to tier 3 right now. Speed scroll forces another Stormbolt. Yo, this uh, very much looks like game 5 so far. It would be kind of thought that on map 3 already and then Happy and 40 turned it around with a super strong late game so can't be sure yet. Tier is playing a very different follow up though compared to before he's not rushing tier 3 in a very greedy manner but rather he is staying on tier 2 and pumping out. 61 supply already for him. We have Lin and Happy both at around 50 so that's pretty even but the humans see a big difference between the two. That's right. Lin also no tier 3 this time, just straight up Raider Walker. Tier 3 on TH's side on top of that supply lead. Things are getting even better. His Archmage will certainly be underleveled. 
There's nothing really in close proximity that he could creep. So that's a bit of an issue as 40 and Happy are finally establishing that counter expansion. And is the Cryptoid, by the way. Huge potential on this hero. If the game goes long, if he gets level 3 or 4, he is such a menace. Normally on level 1, though. Not too, too scary. Oh, what? He gets the Zeppelin. Ooh. That was a Kobe right there with the end snare. <laughs> Pulls him back in. Nothing inside, though, yeah. Kinda mean to call it a Kobe when the Zeppelin is crashing, though. Oh, damn, true. I kinda of forgot about that. <laughs> that was not what I meant. Um, yeah, right, that happened. Uh, true. <laughs> I meant more like the throw, you know. Yeah. He, was, he was he was a good he was a good good a good ball thrower. Yep. Good he ball threw, thrower. He threw the balls very very well. That is correct. Tier three is done. Forty-eight. Huge supply, and I think fun and games are over for Lin and TH. Just moving across. You ain't having that third base. Yeah, they got scroll the beast double heal scroll huge armies. This should be a little bit too much, eh? This army is so good. Ready with the TP. No, wait, that is 40. Oh, he's gonna be stranded here by himself. Nah, nah, nah. Happy is coming. Invis Mountain King. Crypt Lord in a pretty bad position, not too far up front. That's the Lich for you. And also, kind of approachable fiends. This is not that great. Fiends are falling quickly. Again, grunt damage. Raiders are falling. Scroll of the Beast pop, but only on one side of the army. And they're just getting swarmed. The numbers advantage here is huge. The expansion is working out. No tier 3 this time seems to be working out much better for Lin and TH. Happy's trying to kite backwards, but 40 can get absolutely massacred here. He's just Yo. got Nothing. Yep, absolutely obliterated, man. What didn't work on Shattered is working on Twisted. And with that, we will go game five. That numbers, advantages, and maps will be gone. Lin saving as many units as possible with that heal wave. Kind of sweet. Scroll the Beast on their side, of course, as well. Happy and 40 need a miracle. They're trying to set up a sandwich, but... Still, so rough. The damage here is really strong for TH, especially against the destroyers. He took them all out right away, which means now the Spurling is really strong once more. I must say, Fortitude is uh, surviving there in the upper right corner longer than expected. Yeah. But the army is gigantic for TH, up at 80 supply, maxed out. And Happy still struggling with no mana everywhere. Creepy Falls. Lin is taking the hits, but TH, man, this is still 80 food TH. So strong, so good. Mountain King wiped as well. The other Mountain King on level 5 now. And there's no way, nowhere to go. He can't hide, can't run. And Happy is not in a position to save his ally. MK first, baby. It might be the ticket to victory. That's the two maps that go their way for Lin and TH here as well with a fast expo, forcing the GG. And there we have it. Winners here for map four. Good news for us. Brings us to a fifth map. Full best of five for the decider. And that is not even the last game of the day because we have 40 versus Lin in the one-on-one -on -one department coming up as well. It is actually getting kind of close with the Rara Land pre-sale, I gotta say. <laughs> Two hours and 20 minutes until tickets for the biggest Warcraft party of the year go on sale. Will we finish until then? Usually I finish quite quickly, but not today. Quite quickly and quite rarely. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best combo. There you go. Nullwood to decide it all. Nice. What I love Nullwood. Really? Very weird map, very old map, a little bit BS and Imba sometimes, but screw that, it's fun. All right. We gotta play the fountain game, everybody. And the starting positions will determine a lot there, of course. Expansions are possible, but maybe not that likely. They're heavily guarded and it's a bit random if it's a good expo position or not. 
Do you remember the days when we had Norwood in the 1v1 map pool? I do remember the game with 136 towers by Infi versus Focus. That was so good. He made that tanks against Orc, bro. Tanks <laughs> against Raiders. <laughs> so, and, he did, and he did win. He did win. That was the craziest part. <laughs> that's That's nightmare material, this game. Yeah, we had some we had some interesting maps back in the day. Long before that we had two rivers. <laughs> that was a fun idea. Two rivers, dude, if you show me that map now, I'd say yo Matt Morris did this. Perhaps he did. Perhaps he actually did. I always found it amazing that when Walker 3 came fresh out the box right off chaos, they had a ton of maps. Like a lot of maps. Map makers at heart back then already. Yeah, quality maps oh. like Booty Bay. I, I was about to say Booty Bay, yeah. And Korea. Korea was fun though. That was a, that but was a nice it, homage. Yeah, but is it a good map? No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. I think nothing might be as bad as Booty Bay though. That map was rough. And it's so legendary. Because of the name, her <laughs> booty, her, her. And it's always the first one yep. that's displayed. How is there no map with an A? Strange, right? It's very strange. Booty Bay, though, in, uh, in World of Warcraft, a beautiful little harbor town. Pirate town, I think. They uh, recently introduced Plunder Isles. Like two weeks ago or so. In, War in World of Warcraft? Yep. Uh huh, and is that like an archipelago? That sounds like a dinosaur. A what? An archipelago is a formation of islands in the middle of the sea. Ooh, ooh, Mr. Fancy Words. <laughs> Just say that, dude. Instead of confusing me here with dinosaur talk, um, I don't know, but it kind of is a new. It's basically a battle royal game mode. Ah, okay. Who cares All though? Right. Uh, we well, got a decider. I don't know too much about World of Warcraft, but I do know we have map five ready, boys. It's the decider. Yes. For who moves on into the grand final. I was about to ask him, well, what's it going to decide? It will decide the opponent of Fly and Infi, who succeeded yesterday. And then we have our grand final on Easter Monday. So, what do we have? We have T Agent Lin at the top spawn. Fountain? Fountain? What's the fountain? It's health, right? Hey, don't spoil it. These idiots in chat have to guess. They never get it right. But maybe you are wrong as well. Maybe it's the ruse. Chat, what kind of fountain was that? Anyway, we go counterclockwise with close position. And I didn't pay attention. But 40 is close to... Yeah. Kietolin. Uh, we we'll see it now. Lin. Oh, to Lin. Yeah. That's an... Opening for... Oh, he's going MK here as well. Whoa! <laughs> Sicko. How are you going to creep on Nullwood? This is like the worst map in the world for creeping. Yeah. Okay. Also, crazy push potential for 40 towards Lin. If they want to fast expand, it's not the best position for them either. But for Happy and 40, the fast expansion spot is horrible. <laughs> they certainly can't do it. True. Are we going for mercenary camps is the question. Oh man, this got to be an interesting one. Yeah, the merc camp is always a great creep route to go for. Instant level 2 for you. Wait, they both have MK. They both got MK, uh-huh. So, they must have a little bit more knowledge than we do about MK creeping on this map. I wonder how low HP 40 is going to be, though. That Merc camp is a little bit on the rougher side. Not, I don't know if he likes it rough. <laughs> Could have asked him on the bus tour, but you were too busy feeling horrible. I was feeling rough that day, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Wicker Man, who makes us feel good. Thank you for the prime. Thank you. 
All right, seems like a clean creep by 40. Gets out without any losses. Quick level 2 for him. Tiaj also close to his level 2. Oh, and Happy's playing ghouls. First time. Ghoul opening. Okay, so they saw TH with the clap Mountain King. Two games, three games in a row and decided ghouls is the way. B maybe because be. Mountain King creeps so little. Yeah, it might be like a tempo thing. Fiend's a good late game, but they take a long time to come online. Ghouls are online instantly. And you can get active right away with them before the MK really is a big threat. Going for the fountain. I don't think they can kill the Drake. That would take a long time. With Coil and Stonebolt. That would also take a lot of mana. You were right with the health fountain. Ooh, that Merc. Ooh, 40. Uh, Oops. That dragon is run. wild. Run. Dude, he's so obsessed. What the hell? Uh, El Drago, what are you doing, mate? Wasn't even close. TH holding the skill point. Obviously saw the ghouls. Flirting with Clap again. Yeah, seems like Clap here would be the wiser choice on his side. Tier 2 has been reached by Len going Raider Waka once again. But we have no expansions in this game. Very interesting. Yeah, kind of even. Nobody has a base advantage. Nobody has a crazy level lead. TH is half a level ahead, but we're still playing with that dragon here that will boost up the Mountain King. Seems to be a clear priority for both. Skill builds are different with Bash and Clap respectively. Hmm. TH though doing well. He did get that level 3. Very difficult to achieve on this map, but now achieve it he has. Big item in the middle for... 40 is so we mask oh baby isn't that nice pretty good pretty good i gotta say th hammering away at that ghoul but happy is full mana long range coil not exposing the decades so much hmm. food is kind of even tech by happy towards tier 3 has started while th and lin stay at tier 2 40 it hasn't reached that yet. He's gonna get his level 3 here, creeping this gold mine. This is of course a big advantage for Happy with this build. He's gonna be tier 3 way faster, but he's suffering in XP. DK is gonna be stuck on level 2 probably a long while, and Happy is playing the Disruptor. He is playing the Harasser to create space for 40. Rare to see. Can you explain to me how ghouls are supposed to work against Clap level 2 Chain Lightning? Oh yeah, they're going to be Giga Trash later. <laughs> Happy will be transitioning, I'm pretty sure. Um, but right now they're supposed to buy time. As much as possible. Alright, that is a bit of mana used for Hex and Bolt, etc. Happy at a dead end. But they're not wasting too much time. They're rather going for an expansion. Well, then is creeping. No T... Okay, there's a TP. Sorry, was in a wrong spot. Uh, a weird spot. Both focusing on creeping and distracting now. Calm before the storm. Forty and Happy are putting a lot of trust in this MK. All this space that Happy is creating is all for the Mountain King. Ooh, he's got some sick items, dude. Woo! Also level four as well. He's gonna have to TP home now to protect his main base. Problem Forty is. He didn't go clap. True. It's only Bash. Here comes the Stormbolt Blizzard. Should be interrupted fairly quickly. Happy is coming in, but with super little. They didn't have the time to go for a heal scroll. Just one heal scroll here would make a gigantic difference. Oh, MK in trouble. Oh! 40 as Whoa! well. He's going to lose him. Oh my god. Is that the way to the grand final for TH and Lin? Farsia level 3. What a timing. Ghouls are coming in now. Stats used as well. But will that save them? There's a lot of mana still on that MK. Going for the DK now. Stormbolt or Clap. Clap it is. Trying to take out the ghouls. Shadowhunter still full of mana. Full of heal wave. The Hex. The Ensnare is so good here early on. To look for kills. All the trust put in the MK. Didn't quite work out well enough. 
died with a big mana potion, man. That is really, really painful. Wasn't able to make use of all of his wonderful spells. Where is he killed as well? 40 again, getting completely owned. Down to 15 supply. Poor 40. He's been suffering so much this series. And on the other side, there's an expansion up by TH and Lin. Looking so good. 18 food. Didn't get... Oh, the Mountain King is back. Needs some heavy lifting, but TH is calling the shots. And the shot seems to be DK and GG. Only get a statue here, though, though. Little bit of time to recover. But Lin and TH with one step in the gr uh, with one foot in the grand final. Oh, might be able to get the other statue as well then. Yeah, he's chasing forward. Ensnare is cooling down. Man, that's so many kills. 40 and happy. Absolutely gutted after this attack. And like you mentioned, there's even an expansion behind this to make matters worse. And if they want to heal up, they can easily do so at the fountain. <sighs> big, big, big army. No tier 3 techs. Happy has to carry this game with a third hero with the undead tier 3. Oh, it's not going to be easy at all. They need a magnificent fight to somehow come back into this, but... Tiet and Lin got them in the chokehold. It's hard to break out. There's one X Factor, that is Destroyers. Destroyers here could be really good if they can be kept alive. Of course, the destroyers are so far away, and the statues were taken out earlier. That was the crucial move as well in the chase. Very well done here in this timing play. Oh, the AM. Oh my god, he's so frail, and he just goes down with a few right clicks. Level 1 hero falls, the MK on level 3. Still not level 4 here for him. Yeah. Nuked, and that Alta is under attack as well. Lich kind of in a sweet position. Um, to not be able to attack by anything. The most defensive position possible, but TH and Lin, wave after wave, here comes Happy with a lot of ghouls. They got Frenzy, Destro up as well, but that Mountain King is just waiting for the ghouls to arrive to clap him away. And the ghoul opening, an interesting idea, but I guess you were right that <laughs> the clap would be a little bit too good against them. Mountain King can't hold on to that mana any longer, and that Mountain King is dead again. After being down the entire series after map one, in the last map where it counts most, TH and Lin are here. Clutch plays, clutch decisions. And just moments away from the grand final. And Snare catches the destroyer, that's a crucial kill as well. Happy can't even get the kill on the oh, Raider. Pathetic. Level one coil. Yeah, level one coil against Spirit Link units. Pathetic. I think they're just going to close it out. They got a shop coming up in the back. I love to see that. And now the lead is unbelievable. Four, 15 supply, 14 supply here for Fortitude. It's only Happy really can do anything. But this is striking before the undead really has come online. Really sick timing. This wasn't even designed to really destroy them, right? This was just to buy time for the expo to really pay off. But they caught 40 on the wrong foot. Happy's TP was pretty bad, I'd say. And then they got destroyed. I would say no clap and no invul or heal scroll for the fight. It's what really cost him there. And oh, the DK again getting caught. Did the end snares, the hex, the storm bolts, too many ways to kill, not enough ways to survive. And Happy and 40 will not make it to the grand final. It is Lin TH. Wow. Happy and 40 came into this without dropping a single map, and now they're out. TH with the Mountain King plays, man. Paving the way, redefining 2 on 2 meta. And TH Lin versus Infi Fly tomorrow. Very, very, very interesting. For TP League, TH, Infi, and Fly were the organizers. There has been a falling out between TH and Infi, who were previously friends for like 12 years. And now they clash in the 2 and 2 grand final. Ain't that yeah.